Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Farming Simulator 22. In the last episode we were just mowing the lawn, and I think in this episode we're going to mess around a little bit. We're going to uh, go ahead and try to make some crop circles. You want to make some crop circles with me? Let's check this out. Let's try to hit this little birdie. So this is kind of just not really a tutorial episode. This is kind of just some silly gameplay. Um, oh, I think we're gonna have to run through our crops. First we wanna see how much our pigs have. Do they have food? Yeah, I got plenty of food still. Just wanted to check that out. All right, so, is this not right either? Oh yeah, there it goes. All right, so we're gonna fold this up and we're gonna get to our big field up here. If you remember from the map. I'm gonna make some cool crop circles. <laughs> Never done this before. So this is all our property, don't forget. Uh, we're still building. But up here we have this nice section of land. And let's see if we can just make some, like, some cool crop circles here. So let's lower this down. I am going to try to... You're going to see what I have in mind here. Turn this baby on. So, as you're following along, see if you can guess what I am making here. Like I said, mowing is the best part of this game. I mean, you can kind of just do so much. And the equipment's really cool. I don't know if this is going to give it away right here. So this one is going to be a little bit harder. Let's see if we can get this done here. Okay. See what we got here. Oh, that's looking nice. Got a little FS for farming simulator, baby. Oh yeah. So did anyone guess that? I don't think so. Alright. Shall we make some silage? Let's make some silage. Looks like a richy rich sign now. We don't really have that much better to do, so we might as well make money. 
you can actually sell the silage for quite a good deal of money. It takes a long time to harvest it though. It's kind of annoying. But since we already have all the equipment rented, and we're going to try to keep these in pretty straight lines so that we can make this viable option for some income here. If you remember, I think we're at 6000 for the month. Trying to make some more money. We'd like to pay back some of that loan if we could. That's one of the nice things about this mower is that it kind of goes over everything. But also, if you're on this map and you get this piece of property, it also does get stuck very easily on that fence. And then you kind of have to reset your tractor. Let me just check some of my other contracts though right now. Um, still working, still working. Getting closer. All right, we'll continue on. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I meant to turn it on. Now mowing does go pretty quick, thankfully, because of, you know, the you can use a, a, a nice speed for your tractor. I don't know if not bringing the tractor up damages it at all. I'm assuming. But I don't really pay attention to stuff like that. I guess if you were watching every dollar, that would be a factor. But also since we leased, these, leased this equipment, I don't care as much. So let's see if we can make a profit even though it's a, it's it's least. This is a pretty expensive piece. I think it was two thousand dollars per day. Oh, don't want to get stuck there. I'll just get all along the edges here. Tractor is the bomb. The bomb diggity. So for this field, we should have actually had the bigger mower because we're covering so much space. But it doesn't matter, I guess. Get it done. So, like I said, I find this very, this part of the game is very relaxing. It's just like the real thing in real life. Don't forget the grass always regrows. You don't, I mean, if you wanted to do it right, you would plant a field of grass and it doesn't have any of these weeds and stuff and you bring a much better like yield and harvest. But if you have wide open spaces, it's not necessary to spend the money on the seeds and the planting and all that stuff. Unless you're actually a cow farmer, then it matters because you're gonna to wanna to actually feed your cows this stuff and you wanna get the, the best mix ratios between the stuff that you need. So um, in terms of that, it can be kind of important.
And I love how this tractor mows backwards too. It's pretty convenient. So we're making a lot of progress here on this field. We turned our other field into hay, if you remember. Oh, that guy's just speeding. What's up with him? There's children at play here, bro. He's speeding through my neighborhood. Try to get this little piece of land knocked out here. This tractor handles everything, man. I mean, look at her go. I'll name her Mustang Sally. And in terms of this, it doesn't really matter like whether you're in straight lines or not, because we are going to use the wind rower. Wind rower, I think I got it right this time. And we're going to make some nice lines. all over the place. I wonder if I was doing this in real life, if I would keep to straight lines or not. I don't know, because it's such a big piece of equipment, like, it's hard to even imagine. Farmers are pretty lucky. I'm not a farmer. When I said when I grew up mowing the lawn, I'm talking about, like, a tiny John Deere. I had like probably 100 horsepower, not even. Probably like 50 horsepower, 50 cc engine. But it was my dad's pride and joy. He had a little cup holder on the side. He had his beer there. And on Sundays, that was his thing, man. He would just mow. I felt like such a big man when I was able to start doing that. Probably 13, maybe. A little bit older these days. Not much, but a little bit. Old enough to be able to mow the lawn on a game and not worry about it in real life. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. But I just prefer to spend my Sundays in a different manner. Oh, we're almost all cleaned up here. Gotta get these weird little passes here. It's kind of an odd shaped piece of land, so... If it was square, I think it'd be much easier. We're at 14 o'clock. So we might have to mow into the night. need some maintenance on our tractors pretty soon. Alright. That pretty much settles that one. I'm kind of going straight lines now.
And the nice thing about this is that um, anywhere there's grass, you can kind of mow. It's not defined by the fields, really. Um, I mean, you have to own the property, but I could mow all the way down um, anywhere on here. It doesn't have to be confined to the fields. So if you push escape, you can see where uh, we are up here. And this is kind of this dark green section is kind of where the land is defined. But with the mower, you don't have to worry about that. Only when you're doing plowing and planting does that come into play. We want to get every grass, every bit of grass that we can. We're gonna turn this into silage and really make some decent money here. I think once we harvest all this, we should make upwards of 30 grand, which is not a bad pull. Nothing you do in this game really makes you rich. I think that the, the best income you make is probably from sugar beets, but in my opinion, that's the most boring because it takes so long to harvest them. But I guess that's why they make the most money. back up here and finish up our little patch up here. Not too much left over here. Get it in a backwards swipe. just about do it for up here so now we should be free able to go on kind of do it in a better kind of manner here with rows let's see where we're at I have this weird thing about making sure. No, I wasn't lying. So we're gonna kind of get the edge in here. Now we'll take out this brush up here. But it does get all the grass. Shouldn't be too bad once we get it in, once we get the uh, 
wind rower going. It's so realistic that when, even when you're on like a slant like that, it kind of doesn't mow because um, like you're not in the right position to mow. I'm just I'm not going to care about my equipment. That's the nice thing about leasing. You can see how dirty it gets already from this one field. Pretty much all mowed up now. One or two more swipes here. We're gonna go ahead and get this stuff in a nice line so that we can pick it up with the baler. And we're gonna actually use the silage baler. This was a big field to mow. All right, we're just about done here. Two more passes. Can't leave any blade unturned. Right, we are cleaned up. Got some air there. Right, we're gonna go ahead and switch tractors. We already got our tether all hooked up. Oh, you know what? My bad. We don't want to use the tether, do we? Oh, contract is almost done. What's up with this? Oh. It's acting a little bit weird here. There we go. Got to get this guy back on the horse. This guy is finished. Let's accept that contract. Let's get our money in. 
Let's see how we're doing monetarily wise. We're up 10 grand this month. Yeah, up 10 grand. Okay, let's go ahead and disconnect this. We're gonna use our big tractor. We wanna get the wind rower. Looks like our corn is coming along nicely. Let's hold this baby up. Get it up to our big field figure out how we're gonna do this in a systematic way so that it makes sense. And let's get started. Let's get these lines done. Now this is important to try to get. Um, you can see it makes these straight lines to be kind of systematic about it so that when you're collecting with the baler, you can kind of just keep going. Because the baler gets filled pretty quickly. So, like I said, it's important to keep these straight lines here. gonna bring us a ton of income. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up. Figure out how to turn around here. This thing's kind of annoying. Kind of hard to get into a good position here. So, I think that looks pretty good. Like this. Back up. Put that baby down. Straighten up here. Sure, we're collecting everything. Looks pretty good. Not the easiest thing to get these big lines going. As long as they're somewhat, you know, straight, then it shouldn't be a real big problem when you're bailing. So now we got these two huge lines. And that's going to make it super convenient for us. Smart. I'm not going to try to back up. Okay. Get this baby going. We're really making some progress. This is a pretty big wind rower. Now if you look, you can see that thing in the center that's the blades are spinning and it's collecting the grass and therefore is making that line. And this is how they work in real life too. That's one another thing about that's really cool with this game is it's pretty true to life.
I'm not good at backing up some of this machinery. It's not the easiest thing. I'm getting better though as days go by. Let's get wind rowing. It's now 16 o'clock. We're going to be here late night. Collecting some of these bales that we're going to store into silage. So in the meantime, let's change tractors real quick. Get rid of this baby. And let's go ahead and get our baler. So a few things about the balers. There's two kinds. There's um, square bales and there's circle bales. And one of them actually wraps it into, into silage. It wraps it into foil or it just doesn't. Uh, it just puts it in bales. And it just depends on what you're going for. Um, silage is, like I said, used for cows and stuff like that. Um, uh, this one's cool. It, it kind of, when it's extended, it kind of, you see down here, it pushes the bales out. But this one doesn't wrap them. This one does the same thing. Only this one makes it in circles. And they're twins. And this one actually turns it into silage. And you can see on the back, oh, no, wrong one. Oops, sorry. So this Pottinger, this one actually wraps it. So that's the one we're gonna be leasing. Go ahead and lease that one, $2,089. And we'll go ahead and get that one picked up. going to be at our shop. And well, why didn't you finish boss? Come on man. Don't expect me to do everything, do you? Let's see how far that contract is away. Oh, pretty close. 98%. So after this pass, that should be done. Let's get back on to our wind rowing. Alright. Man, I really am not good at that. very difficult to do. You know what? I'm just gonna turn this baby on and go to town. Let's go. Alright. There we go. Close enough. Get that one in a nice straight line. Get as much product as we can in one swoop. We're actually not doing too bad. Go ahead and lift that baby up. Turn around. Get this last little bit over here.
getting closer to end game over here. Looks like our guy is now at the shop, so we can hook up our baller. Get him back here. As soon as I finish up this little row here. And the rest of that I'll just kind of go over with the baler in a weird way. It doesn't have to be in these, these lines for the baler. You can kind of just swoop over, but it definitely makes it easier. Let's get over and get our baler hooked up. Get him over to the field. We might actually have to sleep so that we have a full day ahead. But we'll determine that in a minute. All right, let's see where we are. See the best way to start making these lines now. It might be like this I'm thinking. Very hard to try these things. What the heck? All right, there we go, that's close enough. Turn that baby on. I'm just gonna go around in a circle. I mean, we can do that with the baler too, so. Makes sense. And it looks like our baler has arrived right on time. Couple more swoops and we'll be ready to start bailing. I don't know if we're gonna make it in the daylight.
Some of these look like they're pretty straight lines. I think we're almost done. And then we can really start using the baler. A couple more passes. It's going to be interesting to see how this flows when we actually get it all hooked up. Do one or two more passes here and then we'll get it hooked up. 